I'm on the phone now with Greg Shirley. He's our guest, the uh, author. His new book that just came out, Last Act, The Final Years and Emerging Legacy of Ronald Reagan. This is an outstanding book. Now, your book is based on facts. Your book is based on interviews, and you you have, uh, uh, you know, scrupulously gone through this with numerous, numerous endnotes. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yes, I think there's about 100 uh, pages of uh, endnotes, sources, bibliography, and index. And you spoke to a lot of people who lived during this period and uh, first-hand witnesses? Everybody from uh, you to Ed Meese to uh, Jim Baker to, uh, uh, you know, every, anybody you can imagine who was there uh, to uh, observe and participate in the life of times of Ronald Reagan. What would you say is the the final legacy? Well, maybe not the final legacy, but the legacy today of Ronald Reagan. He remade, Mark, he, he remade the Republican Party. The Republican Party uh, had, from the time of Eisenhower up till uh, his election in 1980, had been uh, uh, the story of uh, warring factions, you know, with uh, Eisenhower versus Taft, Goldwater versus uh, 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 Rockefeller, um, Nixon less so. Nixon was an unusual figure, but even so, he mo- mostly by 68, he mostly sided with the establishment. And then, of course, Ford versus uh, Reagan. Reagan completely remakes the Republican Party. And, and uh, in fact, I would suggest that Reaganism, in and of itself, is a distinct and particular strain of American conservatism. It's very based on the future, it's based on the individual, it's based on entrepreneurship, it's based on maximum freedom consistent with law and order, as he said in 1964. I think it's based on, uh, on uh, more, more freedom and less government. And, I, and, he, and he articulated that. He got up every morning, he thought, what can I do to enhance the freedom of the American people? I believe that in my heart of hearts. That was what his mission was, was that the Soviets were a threat to American freedom, the American government was a threat to American freedom, and he set about to push back against those things. And in that he was very successful. So I would say that the, but I'll also say that he believed in the spiritual individual. Now he wasn't, you know, he, you know, uh, there were Enlightenment figures like Thomas Paine that he was enamored with. I'm not sure he, I would call him an Enlightenment conservative, but there were Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Paine and Immanuel Kant, uh, others that he, uh, that he admired and sometimes quoted. And yet there are conservatives today, or, or self-proclaimed conservatives today, who will attack Reagan? They'll attack him for some issue. They'll attack him, uh, uh, or you know, they'll they'll claim that his health or whatever it is. What is that all about? I think it's it's the deconstruction of some that lies deep inside the establishment. Mark, I think that uh, that uh, the the American left has proven, as as you saw in the debate last night, is is that the American co- uh, has adopted European liberalism, has adopted the uh, Jacobin philosophy of the. Of the what about revolution. conservatives who do this? Forget about Reagan. It's time to move on. That's well, I think, but I think, but I, I think also is is that because they can't explain it, because they can't defend it, because they weren't a part of it, therefore they don't understand it, and therefore they say they they use the phrase, let's move on. When you and I know, it's not about the personality about Ronald Reagan, it's about the philosophy and, and ideology and, uh, and mission of Ronald Reagan that is just as applicable today as it was in 1980. I mean, that's like saying, let's forget about the great philosophers, the great statesmen, exactly. let's forget about Churchill right. and, 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 and George Patton. Why would you forget about successful statesmen? Well, that's a, I don't know the answer to that. Why would you, why would you forget? That's like saying forget George Washington or Thomas Jefferson uh, or John Adams or James Madison. I mean, it, is that, if you're going to forget James Madison, then I guess you better forget the Constitution. And what do you say of these establishment Republicans and their surrogates in the media, of which there are many, who say, well, Reagan couldn't get nominated today. I don't believe that for two seconds. Isn't that interesting, Mark? The only people who make that argument are moderate and liberal and establishment Republicans. I don't know any conservative Republican who makes that argument. The fact of the matter is, is that we don't know. Uh, it, it, but I suspect, and I, th- I think you suspect too, Ronald Reagan remade the Republican Party, and Ronald Reagan would ma- remake the Republican Party again if he was alive and vital and active and running for the nomination. He would he would remake the party and give it a coherent philosophy again. I think many of the people he defeated are back. They're back in their progeny, whether it's the Bush family or uh, you look at Boehner. Mc- McConnell was never a Reagan guy, was he? No, he was not. Uh, I'm trying to remember who he supported. I think he supported he was, John Connolly in 1980. But he was served in the Ford Justice Department for a period yes, of time. Yes, he did, before he went back to, uh, to Louisville to run for county executive. 
And John Boehner, I looked at his background. There's no evidence he was a young supporter of Ronald Reagan, other than maybe he voted for him. Well, yeah, I don't think, I don't think, I never, I mean, I did a lot of research on, on Boehner, and I don't recall him ever saying anything, uh, you know, very, you know, uh, favorable about Ronald Reagan. He was, he was, he was, you know, he ran as a conservative, but by that point, most people were running as conservative, even if they didn't understand it. And, of course, the Bush family fought like hell to stop Reagan, didn't they? Sure. And what's interesting is is that, sure, I mean, uh, George H.W. Bush took on Ronald Reagan in the primaries in 1980. But what's interesting is that the only primary in which Ronald Reagan took sides in 1978 was the primary for uh, a, a Texas House seat uh, in which... Uh, a, uh, uh, George H. W. Bush was running, and Reagan supported his uh, more conservative opponent. But it's the only primary in which Reagan, even even you know Chuck Percy and other races, uh, 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 the New Jersey Senate race in 1978 featuring Jeff Bell and uh, Clifford Case, or, uh, 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 Case, uh, Senator Case, uh, he didn't take sides in that, but he did take sides in the Texas House race. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and you know, and Rove was never a Reagan. Uh, advocate in 76 and 80. I mean, he was a Bush guy. He always was. He always, in fact, he still is a Bush guy. He was never, uh, he was for Ford. Uh, he was head of the College Republicans in 76, uh, working for Gerald Ford to beat, I mean, the whole Republican establishment was arrayed against Ronald Reagan in 1976. The Republican National Committee, obviously the White House, the state parties. Reagan, you know, comes with a hair's breadth of beating Gerald Ford for the nomination, only 57 votes out of 2,257 casts, and he's got all the power establishment uh, arrayed against him. He only has the support of, you know, a few courageous uh, conservative activists, uh, uh, such as yourself, and uh, some, you know, a bunch of uh, young uh, kind of junior varsity operators out of California. But that's it. He has no editorial support, no party support, and yet he comes within a hair's breadth of uh, defeating an incumbent president for the nomination. Even George Will, when Reagan was taking on Ford, he, he was very caustic in what he, he was, said he about Reagan. He was very Reagan. caustic to Ronald Reagan all through the 1970s. In fact, George wrote some very personal things uh, about Ronald Reagan in the 1970s. But, of course, so did uh, Charles Krauthammer. There was, there was a lot of establishment columnists who were very uh, uh, derisive uh, toward uh, Reagan. One of the few who always treated him with respect uh, was uh, Bob Novak, who always had, I think, a very practice, acute eye for, for uh, uh, you know, the real deal from the fake. And I think he always perceived in Reagan to be the real deal. And the Reagan supporters were attacked, just as conservatives or the Freedom Caucus is attacked today, called kamikaze Republicans. Yes, right. They? Yes, right. The kamikaze. I mean, I remember in 1978, uh, uh, Walter Cronkite going on national television and talking about the off-year off elections, uh, uh, Gordon Humphrey, uh, Bill Armstrong, and uh, a couple others, where these, these conservatives were upsetting the establishment uh, Democrats, and he referred to them as uh, kamikaze uh, conservatives who traditionally lose were winning that night. And that always stuck with me, is just that, is that I, I, you know, <laughs> I didn't feel like I was ready to fly into a battleship. <laughs> but that's what our friend George Will called us, too. Yes, that's right. Yeah, in in his column, and uh, and I think a lot of that goes on today. You look at the Wall Street Journal editorial page today; it's a disaster. It, it, they, it's very much a corporatist uh, view of the world, and I think that you know it, people forget. You know, you remember 1975 when Ronald Reagan announces he's going to take on Gerald Ford. He goes to the National Press Club, holds a press conference. And he attacks, uh, criticizes, and, and runs against the Washington buddy system, against the lobbyists, uh, big labor, and big business. He specifically cited big business because he saw them all in league with, with uh, each other to try to feather their own nest at the expense of the American people. And they were backing his opponents, too, just sure. like they do today. They Absolutely. try and take out conservatives. Absolutely. And, in fact, 1980... Every business, uh, every uh, poll, every survey of business executives showed that uh, they preferred either uh, John Connolly or George H.W. Uh, uh, Bush. Bush. Uh, they did not prefer Ronald Reagan. And the only senator to support Reagan in 1976? Jesse Helms. And Laxalt. 
and Paul. Yeah, that's right, Paul Laxall and uh, 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 Jim uh, uh, from Idaho. His name escapes me, but you're right. Yes, oh obviously. yeah, yeah, McClure, McClure, Jim McClure right? Yes, yeah, Jim McClure. You're right. But you're right. Yes, Laxall was chairman of the campaign. Of course, uh, Senator Helms ran the North Carolina effort, which was the big upset where Reagan staged his comeback. But yes. We had some great conservative senators back then, and and there's a dearth of them today. Do you agree? Yeah, I, you know they were real firebrands. They, they didn't mind running, taking on the. I mean, Hatch was a firebrand back then. Today he was. Is a disaster. I remember him filibustering against judicial appointments of uh, Jimmy Carter's. Uh, Gordon Humphrey, who is you know kind of forgotten yeah, history now, but he was a wonderful senator, a voter, the airline right pilot, a citizen candidate. Yeah, absolutely. He'd never run for office before in his life, and I worked on his campaign. They said, you know, you can't win. In, and he showed that he could win. And Morton and Blackwell Armstrong was, was Armstrong involved in that. Colorado, I beg your yeah. pardon. Yeah, uh, Morton Blackwell was involved in that Humphrey. Yes, campaign. he was. Yep. Yeah, and Armstrong, boy, was he a great senator or what? Now look what the hell's going on out there. Yeah, yeah. From Colorado, uh, Sam, Sam Hayakawa. Yep, California. I yep. mean, they were great senators. They were all characters. They were terrific. Well, I mean, of course, you remember how they all banded together against the uh, Panama Canal treaties and really held the line for a long time before uh, Carter finally got it through. But even then, he only got it through by one, uh, by the first treaty by one vote and the second treaty by, by two votes. The, the reason why it's important to go through this, folks, with my dear friend and the, really the Reagan expert and historian, uh, Craig Shirley, is so you understand that today... When they demand lockstep support in the Republican Party, when a guy like Ted Cruz or Mike Lee, when they step out and they attack them, this is new. I mean, trashing a few conservatives like this, because I remember in my youth, Craig remembers, and the history books will tell you, Ted Cruz is a superb senator. But Ted Cruz, there were, there were, there were five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten Ted Cruz types in the U.S. Senate in the past, correct, Craig? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they didn't, they didn't really wake up and worry about what the Washington Post wrote about them or how they were going to be reported on CBS, because most of the time they were ignored anyway. Um, uh, so, so they were kind of liberated, you know, and they didn't have any ties to K Street because they'd been out of power so long that the, the K Street really lobbyists didn't pay attention to them. So they really were, you know, kind of an island, but it was a, but it was a very, a very nice ideological, pure island on which they could pursue, you know, uh, with great passion, uh, you know, their, uh, their ideals and their, and their goals. Uh, without fearing, you know, looking over their shoulders saying, who am I going to offend on K Street? Who am I going to offend in the media? Who am I going to offend in the establishment? That's the problem you have today is, is that you have too many people looking over their shoulder worrying who they're going to offend or cut, is, or cut themselves off from their money. This is really a great book, Craig. Thank and you're a great you. guy. And you, you, and, you, and you deal in fact. You deal in history. You're doing firsthand accounts. And, uh, and for this, I want to salute you. The book is Last Act. The Final Years and Emerging Legacy of Ronald Reagan. If you want, really, the third book, but if you want a tremendous book on the truthful history of Reagan and the lasting legacy and so forth, and now more than ever, get this book. You can get it at any uh, real bookstore, warehouse stores. Yeah, you can get it on Amazon.com. Amazon, Barnes & Noble. And we're going to link to it on uh, Mark Levin Show, Facebook, Mark Levin Show, Twitter. Craig Shirley, you're a dear friend, and I wish you all the best with this great book. Thank you, Mark, very, very much. Thank you. It means a lot to me. All right. Take care of yourself. This is a good man who writes his books, and he knows what he's talking about, who conservatives and Reaganites rely on. Last act, The Final Years, an emerging legacy of Ronald Reagan by Craig Shirley, New York Times bestselling author. We will link to it on my social sites, and I will be right back. Mark Levin.